Good morning and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. I hope everything is going swimmingly. Um, all good here. Thank you very much. It's Monday and, well, it's Monday, isn't it? Um, so today, to cheer myself up, to drag me out of the Monday blues, I thought I would do a quick video. Um, now, this video has been kind of inspired by something I've spotted going on Instagram at the moment, where we have quite a few people... Um, it's not necessarily a tag, I don't think. Uh, well, if it is, I haven't been tagged. Um, but basically, people are looking at four fragrances for the year kind of thing. So one for spring, summer, autumn, fall, whatever you call it, uh, and obviously winter. Now, I thought I would go one better and make it a little bit harder for myself. And I would select four fragrances to cover the four seasons. But what, I'm gonna, what I did, basically, um, was looking at my collection, I thought, I'm going to use one house. And to make it even harder, it's not going to be either Auto Prezi or Nassimato. So there'll be no talk of Bergamask here. Oh, just did it. There'll be no talk of Bergamask or um, all my usual favourites for this one. But I've decided to, to dedicate this video to the house that I think is one of the most important houses in my collection, and that's Mayer Olfactive. Now, Sean Mayer's got two houses. He has this one, which is Chateau Lux, and then he has, obviously, Mayer Olfactive. And he does um, obviously the old collaboration like this one with American Perfumer. This is very special and we'll have a review done on itself um, very, very soon. But what I thought I would do is I'll collect four. I mean, Mayor Factor has been around since I think 2020 and I think there's either six or seven perfumes in the collection. So I'm looking at four of them for today. Um, as I say, we'll use one for every season. And the other exciting development, now Sean um, is based in the States, Mayor Olfactive are an American house. And to be honest, getting hold of the perfumes has been a bit tricky because you have to order them from the States, but not anymore. Uh, my dear friends over at Lux Parfum have got the collection available for UK delivery and they're a UK based company. So the entire collection are with Lux Parfum, along with Rogue, with Sweet Off, with Roger Dove, with Auto Parisi, with Nassimato, with Ormond Jane, um, Kajal. So they've got a whole host of, of, of houses that you want to explore. So, um, I mean, Lux Parfum have pretty much got the niche market covered now. So if you're looking for really exciting, really really interesting and, and original niche perf perfumes, have a look at Lux Parfum because they pretty much have everything that you're gonna need. So enough of that, uh, and just, just for clarity, they're not paying me <laughs> for this. I'm just really, really pumped that um, you're gonna be able to get hold of Sean's work in the UK without long shipping and all that sort of nightmare. You can get it more or less next day. So that's really, really good. So without further ado, we will go through the perfumes and the seasons and why I think they are perfect for that particular time of year. Okay, first up, we're gonna look at winter. And for winter, I would wear, and I have done, Tempo Rubato from Mayor Olfactive. This is an outstanding, blast of a perfume. There is a full review of it, um, but I just want to talk about it a bit more because this is something else. It really is a very, very spectacular and very, very special perfume. This was created uh, by Sean to reflect sort of like the jazz scene, and it's kind of like an ode to the legendary uh, singer, Billie Holiday, Billie Holiday, who pioneered or perfected this, this term called tempo rubato, which effectively means stolen time, so she could sing off beat with her, with her songs and stuff like that. Now, I speak to Sean Mayer fairly regularly, and to be honest, most of the time when we talk, we talk about music probably as much, if not more, than perfume. So, you know, music's something that's really important to both of us, and Sean absolutely nailed it with this one. This is a rich, um, punchy, powerful, exotic perfume. You've got apricot, you've got plum, you've got neroli, you've got pitti and then you've got some jasmine, you've got narcissus. There's a tiny hint of coffee in here. And then, of course, there's this gorgeous orris butter that leads you into this leathery dry down with a little bit of musk. This is a stunning perfume. The performance is off the hook, and it's just exciting. It's big, it's bold, it's potent. It just, I don't know, there's something really edgy about it. This is the perfume that I wear on a big night out. If I'm going sort of out into town with the, with, my, with my mates for a, you know, 
out, not dancing, I don't do dancing, but if we're going out drinking or to a club or even to a gig, this is the first perfume I'm thinking of to, to wear. It's just that kind of perfume. It's not necessarily one that you wear for work, it's a special occasions perfume and it's absolutely stunning. Highly, highly recommended, but because it's got so many big, bold elements to it it's perfect in the cold it's warm it's exciting and it just bats off cold and cold weather like there's nothing tomorrow you know if it's gray it's freezing it's damp wear tempo rubato because it will just cheer you up and give you that certain joie de vivre that we all love you know a little grin to yourself so tempo rubato is a really easy choice for me to wear in winter perfectly smashes through the depressing cold blues that you get with some jazz. So there you go, Tempo Rubato for winter. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at spring. So spring has to be Oris Forest. This is another one where Sean has explored Oris Butter and used it to devastating effect. The perfume is, I don't know, this is really, really spring-like for me. It was inspired by hiking by a river. Um, and what that means is, you know, well, you're sort of, I've never been to where Sean had done his hiking and I've never even seen the Merrimack River, um, but I totally feel like I've been there with it thanks to this perfume. I really get it. This is a very, all of these perfumes are very, very natural smelling, by the way. Sean uses an awful lot of natural materials and tweaks it with some synthetics to get the best out of the elements. So they're not 100% natural, but they're really, really close to it, and they certainly smell kind of organic, kind of natural. So if you're looking for that sort of perfumery, this is a really good place to start. Well, they all are. But Oris Forest, it's this sort of warm spring morning when you're walking by a river, and you've got, obviously you've got some Oris in this, Oris butter in this, or quite a lot actually. You've got a little bit of lavender, you've got some violet leaf, um, there's some black pepper, a little bit of patchouli. But what is really, really clever about this one is you get a slightly aquatic vibe to it. It's not like you're in the sea or anything like that, but there's this, this watery note that floats around in the background. And it does give you that kind of sensation of being near water, not in it or on a beach or anything like that. But because this is kind of like a, a fresh, almost herbally green fragrance, and those little aquatic nuances that just float about in it, Again, you know, you, you're just there. It's really fresh, really invigorating, but absolutely wonderful. And what I like is, like Tempo Rubato and all the others, it's got real performance. It's a big presence. Um, it's a very long lasting perfume that really punches out. One thing you will notice the more you wear uh, of Sean's work is the opening on all of them is a real fanfare. The, the perfumes hit your skin and explode, and they let you know what the intention of the perfume is. You get to smell little bits of everything, all the materials that Sean's used in the perfume, and especially with this one, you'll get a kind of like, it's almost like a drive-by where <laughs> every every uh, like material screams at you. And then they all kind of settle down and the per perfumes then become very harmonious. The blending to all of them is phenomenal. Um, and they're just a real journey. So Oris Forest, if you want that fresh outdoorsy feel, it's perfect on a spring morning when the sun's coming through um, and you just want that kind of, you know, to be really into that whole, uh, that whole moment as you wake, you know, as the day's waking up, this is the perfect kind of perfume to celebrate break that with. So this is a real easy choice for me for spring and that is the wonderful Oris Forest. Okay, what follows spring? Well it's got to be summer and I'm already missing it. So we'll have a look at a beautiful summer fragrance now. For summer it's got to be sun soaked. This is beautiful um, and what it's named sun soaked because I think Sean liked the term of it, you know, when the sun is drenching everything. So it's reflecting off flowers, it's bouncing off the grass, everything is illuminated and bright and shiny because of the intense sunshine. Um, and this was also inspired by kind of like the end of lockdown. So Sean realised that people are coming back to work now. Um, people are going to start going back to their offices. And to celebrate that, he wanted to make a really bright, sunny, summery perfume that can be worn in any environment, it's, you know, it, you can wear it to work because it's an incredibly long lasting perfume with real presence like all of them in the opening. But then after that, it settles down and sits quite close to your skin. It is noticeable, um, but it doesn't dominate rooms. It doesn't scream, look at me or anything like that. It just gives you this beautiful summery vibe. Now there is a full review of this on the channel, but you've got such an amazing perfume here with lots of neroli, but it's an, an, an Egyptian neroli. So it's almost creamy. And then you've got this orange that comes with it and a beautiful, beautiful black currant that just kind of walks through it to give this creamy, fruity, bright, sunny perfume. It lasts and lasts and lasts. And it just, 
I don't know, there's something about this and sunshine, the two, the combination of the two together is perfection. And because it is such a long lasting perfume, when it's hot, it just keeps on going. It doesn't miss a beat when it's warm, is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, for a summer, you're gonna, you're gonna really struggle to find a better summer fragrance than Sun Soaked. I think this is stunning. And like all of them, you know, and I'll keep saying it, they're really, really niche feeling perfumes. So much, <clears throat> There's so much creativity gone into the making of these perfumes. They're an absolute delight to wear. And if you're looking for something that's just that bit different, that doesn't smell like anything else, you know, it doesn't smell cheap, it doesn't smell like it's been made to be popular. These are perfumes that are about the craft of perfumery. And because of that, I absolutely love the house. So Sun Soaked was a really, really easy choice for me for summer. Absolutely outstanding and well worth exploring. And then finally, the season we're in at the moment is autumn or fall if you're in the States. Um, and there's one in the collection that I think is absolutely perfect for, for autumn. It works all year round, don't get me wrong, but it's absolutely perfect for this time of year. So let's have a look at it. My choice for the autumn is Santal Austere. This is absolutely outstanding. And I think for me personally, as a massive lover of sandalwood, this is my favorite sandalwood of them all. And I know that's a big claim. There is uh, a video on the channel, I think it was my top 10 sandalwoods. Now I didn't have this when I made it, but if I did, I would have put this at the top. I even prefer it in terms of sandalwood to the likes of Seminalis or Trumpers Sandalwood Cologne. Now I have done a review of this, but it was from a sample and it was quite a long time ago. Um, and there is a slight difference between this bottle and the sample that I made. In terms of smell, it's pretty much identical. In fact, it is identical. Um, but when, I, when I, I sprayed the bottle, I thought, this is different. This is behaving differently. So I messaged Sean and said, what's happened with Santos there? Why is it different? And what he had done was when the perfume was originally released, it had a very high oil concentration. So what Sean has done is he's just reduced that concentration slightly to make the perfume a lot more airy. It's still very, very long lasting. But this version now, the one I have in my hand, is much more airy. It seems to push out a lot more. So people around me are picking up. I've had compliments wearing this, which I wasn't expecting, um, because to me it's not that kind of perfume. But because it's, it is it's reduced the concentration of the oil in the perfume, it's just that bit lighter and it floats around you much more. It kind of reaches out. Don't get me wrong, it's not a beast. It doesn't scream or, or shout, but it's really, really noticeable on you when you wear it and it's absolutely better for it. So I think this is a much more wearable um, and usable perfume than the original version, which did sit incredibly close to your skin. This one doesn't. So what we have here is an ode to sandalwood. This is inspired by Sean's father who works with wood and you know, Sean as a kid remembers going into timber yards and stuff like that and picking up the smells of these, these wonderful woods that were being worked on. And he's captured it completely in this absolutely beautiful um, ode to sandalwood. But it's not just sandalwood in the perfume. You have some oud, you have a poponax, you have styrax, you have patchouli, and you have castorium. So the two things that kind of leap out there are oud and castorium. And you think, oh no, is this gonna to be too animalic, too funky? Not at all. What he's done, um, he's used all these other materials to help eke out and tease out the best of the sandalwood that is used in the perfume to make an incredibly realistic, natural smelling sandalwood that's earthy, it's real, it's slightly creamy, but it's just amazing. And because, I don't know, the autumn to me, it's, it's a very woody season. All the colors, the leaves, the change on the trees and things like that and the fluctuating temperature. At the moment, for example, it's still quite warm, although we are pretty much in October where it's normally getting really cold now. But it's not, the, the, you know, the weather's gone a bit mad this year. So sandalwood copes well with warmth and it copes well with cold. So for me, it's the perfect perfume. You know, if some, some mornings I go out and it's quite cold, so I wear this. Uh, and then by the time sort of I'm on my way home from work, it's really, really warmed up. And I love sandalwood in the cold and I love sandalwood in the warmth. So it works perfectly. You're completely covered. Whatever the weather's going to be, Santal or Stare will work well for you. It's a dream in a bottle. I absolutely love it. Can't recommend it highly enough. So there you have it. These are four perfumes, one for every season of the year from one house, which is Maya Olfactive. And I really hope that you guys get to try these perfumes soon. And if you do, head over to Lux Perfumes and see what you can find. So listen, thank you ever so much for your time. I hope the video has been entertaining. If you've tried any of Sean's work, please let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about it. I think um, probably our American subscribers will probably know more about Sean's work um, than us in the UK, because you know, 
it's been so difficult up until now for people to get their hands on the perfumes. But there you have it. A perfume for every season by Sean Mayer. So thank you very much for your time and we shall see you all on the next video. Cheers, thanks, and bye.